thank you, Rob, again for your uh, elaborate uh, answer. And you know, um, we certainly have uh, another question um, that ties to the to the skills that uh, the diaspora has. But uh, since our interest is Africa, uh, we want to connect. You know, the, whatever experience we have, whatever. Uh, programs that we benefited from here in, in the country, we want to be able to export it to Africa. So I'll let Sahada, our co-chair of uh, the Canada for Africa group, uh, to introduce herself and also to uh, ask you a question. Over to you, Sahada. Thank you, um, J uh, Jamin. Hi, Rob. Um, I too want to thank you for taking the time to be with us here today. So nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Sahada Alolo and I, I am originally from Ghana. I'm living in Ottawa right now with my husband and three strong teenagers. Um, my daytime work, I am very familiar. Um, that's why I'm so pleased to meet you because I work with uh, clergy a lot. Because I'm a Muslim, but I am often a guest preacher at uh, a lot of uh, Christian churches and um, Jewish uh, synagogues because I happen to work for an organization which is called Multifaith Housing Initiative and we provide affordable housing in the city of Ottawa. And um, our mandate, in addition to providing housing that is affordable, is also working with people of all faiths to say, despite our religious differences, there's more that binds us that separate us. So nice to meet you. Um, with regards to uh, um, my work here in Ottawa, my volunteer work as well, I, I'm also the um, co-chair of the Ottawa Police Equity uh, Community Equity Council. It's one of its kind in Canada, and it's made up of uh, community members working hand in hand with uh, the Ottawa Police to promote um, equity, to, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and also to improve relations between the police and the community. Now, coming to Africa, I, I happen to have had the privilege to go to uh, Ghana, go back to Ghana uh, in 2007 as a Canadian citizen um, to work for Canada in Ghana. And I saw firsthand uh, when I went with my white Canadian colleagues, um, I happened to be the only African and Black and going back to Ghana. And, and I saw how effective and efficient um, the work was when I'm not trying to um, blow my horns, but because I'm from Ghana and I understood the culture, it took me, even though I've been living in Canada for a very long time, it's like you have reverse culture shock, but it takes a shorter time to get acclimatized to the situation and work with barriers because you already have the language and you understand the culture. And so the resources that were invested in me, the return on investment was greater than the return on investment with my white colleagues. And that's because the, if the posting is short term, it sometimes work well, that exchange is important. But my question, you know, I'm saying all of this to lead to my question. And my question is, we have African diaspora living in Canada with wealth of um, educational experiences and work experiences. What can Canada do when it comes to international development and aid? And I happen to like what you said about laziness in terms, of, and I'm beginning to feel that with Canada, our international Canada does a lot when we go abroad, but uh, there's laziness in terms of the international development working through other agencies and sort of working through the locals, right? So um, my question is, how can um, Canada ensure that they tap into the, the, the skills that uh, African diasporas have here in Canada? So we can um, work in collaboration with locals in various African countries that we come from. Where, where are you from in Ghana? Tamale. Uh, Tamale? Yes. That's north. Yes, that's north, yeah. <laughs> I haven't been that far up. I, I, I've been halfway up, but Tamale is like that's that's very far. So yes. I, that, that that's very good. So most of my time was in Accra on the mm -hmm. Gold Coast and uh, and there. And it's um, I think you, you you hit on a really important point, and that is I suspect that the value added, the multiplier value you added, wasn't because you were black, and they were not less because they were white. Speaking as a white person, I think it's because you knew the culture. Okay. You had, you know, and, and what 
what Canada has to, and, and in the best use of the word exploit, I don't, you know, I know it's a bad word, but we need to use to exploit the diaspora here to further Canadian interests in Africa, because you know, you know the lay of the land, you know at least one of the languages, if not more, you know the way things work. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm just picturing myself in a Accra, and I had a police escort wherever I went, kind of lucky. But I had these guys on motorcycles in front of me, moving the traffic and kicking people with their legs. I mean, I've got videos of it on my phone. And I was with someone from Ghana who, oh, that's normal. Okay, yeah, we get, you go through the traffic. And I'm going, oh, my God, you know, how does this work here? And, you know, and we got stuck going out to um, Elmina in a, uh, in a uh, you know, traffic jam. Uh, the Africans were saying, well, that's right. Well, we can go this way and this way navigating the traffic is kind of a, a symbol or a metaphor for navigating the culture. And we don't do a very good job at that. We, we're, um, I think, starting to get it. So I, I work quite closely with the Canada Africa um, uh, business Chamber of Business, whatever it's called. Um, I always get Chamber the name. Business, I think, Business Chamber or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah Canada Africa Business Chamber. There's the, there's the Chamber of Minds and the, uh, the Business Chamber. And what they are is they're mostly Africans who are from different countries who I think serve as interpreters, not linguistic interpreters, but cultural interpreters, business interpreters, um, they understand how it is that you can go and I'm still naive. I'm, I'm even though I've been to Africa many times, um, I'm still sort of caught by surprise. Mind you, when I'm with my colleagues who are MPs who've never been to Africa, I, I forget I've learned things. You learn things by experience, but I had to learn it secondhand as a white boy from Canada. You bring that experience and we should pay for it. We should acknowledge it and pay for it because it's of value to Canada. So if a mining company wants to get a social license to operate in a country, they should hire people in Canada from that country to help them understand the educational system, the, the cultural mores, the way women and men relate to each other. It doesn't mean we agree with everything because what I also find is that once Africans have been in Canada for a while, you're way more Canadian than you think you are. <laughs> you, you, you go back to Africa, and even though you understand the country, you kind of pull your hair out saying, but that's not the way it should be. Because frankly, when you're in Canada, people think you're African. But when you're in Africa, they think you're Canadian. That's and they true. think, why are you bringing those Canadian values to us? That's Canadian. And, and, but that's the nature of a diaspora. You have one foot in your homeland and you have one foot in your chosen land. And what we try to do is make sure that, you know, people aren't pulled apart. We, uh, you know, we, you know, you got one foot here, one foot there. We want you to have, you know, to be integrated and be useful in both countries. And uh, that, that's the goal. But I don't have an automatic plan for that. I have an instinct for it. Um, what I try to do in my work is link people up. So I keep a kind of a database of people I meet from different countries. And, you know, if I'm going, I just had a, a note from our high commissioner in, uh, in Accra, Heather, who's leaving. And, uh, but she's been there for I think five years. And uh, what I would do is when I came across different issues, I'd say, oh, I need to hook you up with someone I met who knows that. So it could be from Burundi, it could be from Rwanda, it could be from Chad, it could be from any country, uh, trying to hook people up because the systemic racism in Canada also makes Africans shyer about blowing their own horn, as you say. 
you know, we, 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 we need you to demonstrate your skills. And what, what happens with racism is people become diminished and smaller, trying to just hide to get by. And what we need to do is get opening up to say, this is a gift. And so we're in process. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, I should have said. Alaikum <laughs> salam.